Hello. In this lecture, I'd like to talk to you about spherical mirrors. So first of all, let's define our terms. Um, spherical mirrors are mirrors that you can consider to be as a section of a sphere. Okay, now they could either be concave or convex mirrors. We define concave mirrors as they curve towards the light source. And we define convex mirrors as they curve away from the light source, okay? So yet again, there's all kinds of mirror shapes that we can have, but we're only gonna consider curved mirrors in this lecture that can be modeled as a section of a sphere, okay? So here, I'm showing you an example of some um, concave and convex mirrors. Now these aren't perfect spheres, okay, because they're spoons. But you can see here that the concave mirror is the little upside down girl image here on the left, and the convex is the right side up girl image here on the right. And you can see that both of these um, examples of mirrors distort the images somewhat, um, but uh, they do make actually pretty good images for spoons. All right, so if you want to figure out what the images that are formed from spherical mirrors are look like, you can do a ray diagram similar to the ones that we did for thin lenses, right? Now, just like for the thin lenses, I'm gonna break down into steps how to draw these ray diagrams for the mirrors. And yet again, um, our supplementary textbook for this course is Knight's um, Introductory Physics Textbook. And so um, this is uh, adapted from his text. All right, so here we go. So step number one, just like the lenses, you're gonna draw an optical axis, okay? Now, this optical axis should be perpendicular to the mirror. You're gonna center the mirror on the axis, okay? And you're gonna draw the object at a distance s from the mirror center with height h. So this is the defining of your variables. We're gonna use similar variables as to the ones that we did for the thin lens equation, where the distance from the, um, <clears throat> from the object to the uh, sort of center point of that mirror on the optical axis is s, and the height of the object is h. And then, yet again, just like thin lenses, you're gonna draw three special rays. Now these three rays are slightly different how you draw them for, of course, mirrors versus lenses. Here we go. First, you're gonna draw a ray parallel to the optical axis that reflects through for a concave mirror or away from for a convex mirror, the focal point. Next, you're gonna draw an incoming ray that passes through for a concave mirror or heads towards for a convex mirror, the focal point, and then reflects parallel to the axis. Next, you're gonna draw a ray that strikes the center of the mirror and then reflects at an angle equal, um, angle of incidence equals angle of reflection, I guess, from the optical axis, um, an equal angle on the opposite side of the optical axis. Okay, so those are your three special rays. And we're gonna work an example problem here in a minute, and so it'll be a lot easier to think about this once you've seen the example problem. Next, you're gonna extend the rays forward or backward until they converge to form an image point, okay? And then you're gonna draw your image of the object in. You're gonna measure the image height um, h prime and the image distance s prime um, and determine those things from the mirrors. And we're also going to introduce some equations here for spherical mirrors so that you can calculate them directly if you're a terrible artist like me. Okay, so let's define the signs of the um, things that we're going to plug in to our mirror equation. Now the mirror equation and the magnification equation for mirrors are super similar to our lens equations, okay? So you just um, probably need to memorize just the one equation. The nice thing about spherical mirrors, and now they have to be spheres, but the nice thing about spherical mirrors in particular is that uh, the focal length is equal to r over two, where r is of course the radius of curvature of your mirror. So the focal length is always gonna be r over two for a spherical mirror, okay? So the sign conventions for these equations um, are that your radius of curvature and your focal length are going to be positive if the um, curvature of the mirror is concave towards the object and they're going to be negative if it's convex towards the object. So if the mirror kind of bows away from the object, then you'll have positive R and F, and if it bulges towards the object, then you'll have negative R and F, okay? Now, S prime is also different for um, mirror equations. It's a real image, and it's a positive value if it's on the same side as the object. 
Now this gets easier to remember because it seems like this is opposite. Well, it is the opposite sign for lenses. S prime is positive for lenses if it's on the opposite side of the lens. But it's, it's easier to just understand that what we mean by a real image is that it's formed from actual light rays, real light rays, and not the back tracing of the light rays. So this makes sense if you think about the images from mirrors because, of course, the light's going to be reflected from a mirror. So in order to have it be from a real ray, it would have to be on the same side of the mirror as the object. Okay, so that's easy to remember if you remember that. So S prime is positive, and it's a real image if it's on the same side of the mirror as the object. It's negative if it's on the opposite side of the mirror from the object. That makes it a virtual image, which is formed from the back tracing of the rays after they've reflected off the mirror, okay? All right, and so we have our mirror equation. One over S plus one over S prime is equal to one over F, so you can calculate it that way. And the magnification, yet again, is minus S prime over S. And the focal length is R over two, okay? So those are your equations. All right, let's do an example problem. This one's from Knight, of course, our supplementary text. So an object is 40 centimeters in front of a concave mirror that has a focal length of 20 centimeters. Is the image upright or inverted, real or virtual? And what is the object distance and magnification? And draw the ray diagram. Okay. Okay, so it tells you it's a concave mirror, so that means that the focal length is positive, okay? So F is equal to plus 20 centimeters because it's concave, and we also know our image distance that was given to us. So we can plug into our mirror equation, 1 over S plus 1 over S prime equals 1 over F, and we plug in 1 over 40 centimeters plus 1 over S prime is equal to 1 over 20 centimeters. Now we solve for um, 1 over S prime using just some simple algebra, 1 over S prime is equal to 1 over 20 centimeters minus 1 over 40 centimeters, and that gives you 1 over 40 centimeters. So when you invert that, you end up with S prime is equal to 40 centimeters. That means that, of course, the image is a real image because positive S prime means it's on the same side as the object. Now we plug into our equation for the magnification, and we end up with M is equal to minus 40 centimeters over 40 centimeters, which is minus 1. So that means, because it's negative, that the image is inverted. It's upside down, okay? But the, the image is the same size as the object because the magnification absolute value is 1, okay? So the image is real. It's the same size as the object, but it's inverted, all right? Okay, so let's go over the ray diagram. Okay, now here, um, when I started doing my ray diagram and everything was in the same color, all of my rays were in the same color, I looked at it and I thought, wow, that's really confusing to look at. <laughs> so I redrew it with um, things in different colors so that you could differentiate between the three special rays. Now here, I've drawn uh, my object arrow in black. So this is my object arrow, okay? And my image arrow is in blue, okay? All right, so let's go through this. We've got our three special rays. I'll go from top down here. So the top ray is the one that runs parallel to the optical axis from the mirror, okay? And then the rays that run parallel to the optical axis are going to reflect back and go through the focal point. So that's my black one. Okay, my next ray, top down, is the one that goes from the top of the object to the center of the mirror, okay? Now, when it goes to the center of the mirror, you've got at the center of the mirror point an angle equal but opposite on the top from the optical axis and down. So my blue arrow, or my blue ray, goes to the center of the mirror and then reflects back around the optical axis at an equal angle. And then finally my red ray, that's the one that goes through the focal point. And remember that rays that go through the focal point are reflect reflected back so that they're parallel to the optical axis when they come out. Okay, so those are the three special rays for spherical mirrors, all right? Um, now, where they intersect is the image point, so that's down here. And remember that when we solved our equations, we, image, we ended up with our image distance and our object distance being the same. So that means that basically you just get an upside down, uh, exactly the same size image of your um, object right where it is. All right. So I managed to draw the ray diagram so that it matched the calculations. Two thumbs up for me and my terrible artistic abilities.
All right. Okay, so that's an example of how to do um, mirror uh, ray tracing. And that's an example of how to use the mirror equations. So I hope that was straightforward and um, you don't have any questions, but if you do, let me know. And as always, I'll see you around.